Historians tried to hide Severus Rome's emperor because he was from Africa, Lucius Septimius Severus. When we think of Roman emperors, we often imagine men like Julius Caesar or Nero. But there's an overlooked figure who breaks the mold, an African emperor named Lucius Septimius Severus. He defied the usual image of Roman rulers and left a lasting impact on the empire. In this video, we will uncover the hidden story of Lucius Septimius Severus, a man whose remarkable achievements have been unjustly obscured by the pages of history. We dive into the story of how he reshaped Rome. Before we get right into the video, please smash the like button and subscribe to the channel to keep informed of our eye-opening black narrative. Born in AD 145 in the prominent Roman Libyan city of Leptis Magna in Africa, Severus came from a wealthy and prominent local family. His family had attained Roman citizenship, and his father's military and political achievements had further elevated their standing. Geta, Severus's father, had a successful military career, serving as a senator and holding various high-ranking positions in the Roman administration. This familial background instilled in Severus a strong sense of ambition and a desire to follow in his father's footsteps. Severus's childhood was marked by exposure to the diverse cultures and traditions of the African continent. This multicultural environment fostered his respect for different ethnicities and shaped his inclusive worldview. During his early years, he received a comprehensive education in Leptis Magna, which laid the foundation for his future success. He studied Greek and Latin literature, philosophy, rhetoric, and history. These studies cultivated his intellectual curiosity and equipped him with the necessary skills to navigate the complex world of Roman politics. As a young man, Severus demonstrated a keen interest in military affairs, inspired by his father's military achievements. He eagerly absorbed knowledge on military strategy, tactics, and leadership, setting the stage for his later military successes. In AD 162, Severus went to Rome and was granted entry into the senatorial ranks, after his cousin Gaius Septimius Severus had recommended him to Emperor Marcus Aurelius. Severus rose through the ranks of the Cursus Honorum, which were public offices held by aspiring Roman politicians, gaining entry into the Roman Senate in AD 170. He was appointed legatus, a senior position in the Roman army, in AD 173 after his cousin became proconsul of the province of Africa. In AD 191, the then Emperor Commodus made Severus governor of Pannonia Superor, a province on the Danube frontier. The following year Commodus was assassinated and in AD 193 his successor Publius Helvius Pertinax was declared emperor, heralding in the year of the five emperors, a time in which five men claimed the title of Roman emperor. Pertinax's reign would last just 86 days before a disgruntled Praetorian guard, unhappy with Pertinax's efforts to enforce stricter discipline within their ranks, assassinated him. The Praetorian Guard then did something remarkable and auctioned off the emperorship to the highest bidder. The wealthy senator Didius Julianus offered the most money for their support and subsequently secured the job. How Julianus had brought his way to the top made him very unpopular in Rome, and as such, three candidates emerged as rivals to the imperial throne. Clodius Albinus, governor of Britain, Pisenius Niger, governor of Syria, and Severus, governor of Gaul. By commanding the largest army closest to Rome, Severus had the upper hand. He secured the support of Albinus by offering him the title of Caesar, thus guaranteeing him a place in the imperial succession if Severus were to be successful. In June 193, Severus marched on Rome declaring himself the Avenger of Pertinax, and before he'd even entered the city, was declared emperor by the Senate. Julianus was executed in the palace after ruling for a mere 66 days, his next move saw him come into conflict with his short-time ally, Albinus. Hoping to secure a family dynasty, Severus declared his eldest son, Caracalla, as Caesar, effectively severing ties with Albinus and quashing any successional hopes the governor of Britain might have had. Albinus subsequently marched into Gaul, and the forces of the two men clashed in AD 197 at the hard-fought Battle of Lugdunum a fight said to be the largest and bloodiest of all clashes between Roman forces. Severus emerged victorious and secured full control over the Roman Empire. He then carried out a purge of the Roman Senate, executing any who had opposed him or shown favor to Albinus. 
Severus then waged a successful campaign against the Parthian Empire in the east, supposedly in retaliation for their support of Pisenius Niger. His forces sacked the Parthian capital city of Ctesiphon and added the northern half of Mesopotamia to the empire. For his efforts, a triumphal arch was erected in Severus's honor in the Roman Forum. Severus enlarged the Roman Empire further with campaigns in Africa and Britain. He made significant gains in Caledonia, modern Scotland, and strengthened Hadrian's Wall, but fell short of his ultimate goal of bringing the whole British island under his rule. It was in Roman Britain that Severus would see his final days. Ill health, most likely caused by gout, took a toll on the emperor who passed away in AD 211 at the age of 65. Under Severus's rule, the Roman Empire experienced a period of stability and expansion, ushering in what historians refer to as the Severan dynasty. Unfortunately, Severus's accomplishments are often overlooked in historical accounts. Limited primary sources and the prominence of other emperors contribute to this neglect. Cultural biases and prejudices also play a role in downplaying the significance of an African ruler in the Roman Empire. Severus's most notable achievement was his military reforms. He improved the training, equipment, and tactics of the Roman legions, making them stronger and more effective. He bolstered the morale and dedication of the Roman legions by increasing soldiers' pay and providing additional benefits. By raising salaries and introducing bonuses, Severus aimed to attract and retain highly skilled soldiers. This approach significantly enhanced the military's effectiveness and loyalty. He also prioritized rigorous training and discipline within the legions. He implemented standardized training programs, emphasizing physical fitness, combat skills, and tactical proficiency. The soldiers were also subjected to strict discipline, ensuring their readiness for battle and maintaining order within the ranks. The results of his reforms were demonstrated by his notable victories when he decisively defeated his rival Clodius Albinus in the Battle of Lugdunum and successfully repelled invasions by the Parthian Empire. He also suppressed rebellions in various provinces, ensuring the stability of the empire. Aside from his military reforms, Severus recognized the need for efficient governance and implemented reforms to streamline the administrative apparatus. He introduced a merit-based system for appointing officials, emphasizing competence over social status. This marked a departure from the prevailing practice of appointing individuals based on their noble lineage. To improve governance at the local level, Severus granted increased autonomy to provincial governors. He empowered them to make decisions regarding local affairs, allowing for more responsive and efficient administration. This decentralization of power fostered a sense of accountability and promoted greater harmony between the central government and provincial administrations. He also initiated the process of codifying Roman law, which would be further developed in subsequent centuries. Codification aimed to systematize and unify the legal framework, ensuring consistency and clarity in legal proceedings. This monumental effort laid the foundation for the famous Justinian Code in the Byzantine Empire. Severus was also distinguished for his buildings. He commissioned the construction of aqueducts and public buildings to address the empire's growing needs. These projects improved access to clean water, promoted public health, and provided spaces for administrative and civic functions. The Aqua Severiana, an aqueduct in Rome, served as a reliable water source for centuries. Apart from the triumphal arch in the Roman Forum carrying his full name, he also built the Septizodium in Rome. He enriched his native city of Leptis Magna, including commissioning a triumphal arch on the occasion of his visit of 203. Severus invested heavily in road and bridge construction projects throughout the empire. These vital arteries facilitated trade, improved communication, and enhanced military mobility. The Via Severiana, a major road connecting Rome to his birthplace in Leptis Magna, stands as a testament to his infrastructure initiatives. The reign of Lucius Septimius Severus, Rome's first African emperor, proved that anyone, regardless of where they come from, can achieve greatness. Despite facing many challenges, Severus became one of the best emperors in Roman history. Born in a city in Africa, he had to overcome a lot to become the leader of the Roman Empire. But through his strong leadership in the military and his smart decisions in politics, he showed that he was capable of achieving great things. 
Severus fought against other people who wanted to be emperor and manage the empire's lands well. He made changes that helped the economy, built a strong army, and brought people from different backgrounds together. While he might not be as popular as Julius Caesar, Marcus Aurelius, or Caesar Augustus, Severus's accomplishments both in war and in making society better set an example for future generations. He proved that where someone comes from should never limit what they can achieve. His legacy as a great leader continues to inspire people to overcome obstacles and strive for greatness. As always, please remember to like the video, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos to help spread the truths and secrets to a wider audience. Thanks for watching.